Hello everyone, Marcus Dahl here, and it's been quite a while since I've done a video in front of the webcam. Feels kind of weird. Actually, it's been quite a while since I've uploaded a video in general. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to do a quick little update video for you guys, let you guys really know what's going on and uh, why I haven't really been posting all that much, as well as just letting you know in general just what's been going on, what my plans are, and what that will mean for you guys going forward. So, uh, yeah, in terms of what I've been doing, to put it bluntly, I've just been working all the time. I've got a day job now, I work at a warehouse, uh, it pays relatively well, and it's helping to fund some of my current endeavors in virtual reality, so that's a plus, but uh, I can definitely say it's been taking a lot of time that normally would have been dedicated to something like video editing and research or studying towards now just plain old trying to make ends meet. And I've also just plain old been trying to study in general of things on engineering and design and Arduino because I'm not really too experienced with that as my central forte. I've actually kind of transferred in one gear from uh, trying to be an art, uh, some kind of artist, uh, 3D animator and some stuff like that to kind of game developer to software and now with engineering since I want to focus on the hardware side of things. And so yeah, I've just been trying to get this whole hardware thing figured out since I want to try to contribute to that because I feel it's what's currently lacking the most in virtual reality right now. And I'd rather not try to take any steps forward in virtual reality if I feel that it's just going to end up being a kind of dead end later on down the road. <coughs> but ocean controls. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, on that very note of hardware and the Arduino, I've actually been trying to focus on a particular implementation of a technology I kind of was theorizing last year, but it really started to finalize and want to test out this year. Uh, last year, you might have recalled the videos I did on uh, Virtual Reality Touch. I'll post a link up here in the, this, up here and uh, down below in the description. So uh, yeah, you guys can just check that out real quick if you want to know what I'm talking about. But effectively, I've expanded upon some of the concepts I had in there and have managed to get it down to a financial level where I think I've actually been able to afford all the parts I can get. And in long term, it might actually end up being something that I could see implemented into head mounted displays going forward since for on a, on a corporate level, it is extremely cheap to implement and I mean very cheap. I mean, personally for me, if it hadn't been for the soldering iron and a bunch of other small little bits, this probably could have been something that I could have added in for less than $30. And if you count in that most HMDs are probably going to have some kind of onboard microcontroller, it's highly probable that this would cost a company like Oculus or a Sony maybe like 5 bucks on a single unit at most to implement. So it's like $5.00. And you can add now uh, that you have virtual reality touch onto the box. Kind of seems like a bit of a no-brainer, but uh, maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. So uh, yeah, what is up with the whole uh, haptic system? Essentially, it's an expansion on the idea I laid out last year where I'm by was using uh, sensory substitution and uh, the layout of surround haptics that Disney came out with. And uh, I'm expanding upon that into something I'm calling volume haptics which attempts to emulate a similar effect to what surround haptics achieved, but in a 3D plane. Hence the change from surround or surface to uh, volume, which encompasses 3D space and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it should hopefully be in a prototype form that can be demonstrated and tested sometime within the month of May and maybe early June. And... Uh, Partially, it's also it's mainly because of that that I've actually been kind of held back a lot on videos. I was planning on doing a video covering the virtual reality rig. Um, this just after the whole uh, video I released last month on Sword Art Online. But the thing is, I kind of I kind of want to play this one a little bit close to the chest, guys. I'm sorry to say. Because uh, everyone's going to make ends meet, and I actually think that I could possibly monetize this, and if I can't monetize it, I could at the very least try to find some way to contribute it into the virtual reality community. And uh, I want to try to explore that before I start going around on the internet and it's completely just doing a hands-on explanation of how you build the exact design schematics from hand in your own office or something. So I hope you can understand on why I've been a little bit uh, slow in that regard with videos. And aside from that, I've also got other things I've got to keep in mind. 
I mean, you wouldn't really want to try to sell this to a hardware partner or something without compl by completely selling it all over the internet. I mean, sincerely, all the information I've provided already in this video is probably a bit more than some companies might be comfortable with, but who knows, maybe I'm just getting ahead of myself and this will never pan out into something I can financially sell. But in that case, whatever, it'll just be another month and now you can just have a little home project that you can do to really quickly uh, scoot together a, an extra haptic system for your virtual reality thing. Think of it almost like Google Cardboard, but for touch now. So uh, yeah, that's what I've been working on right now and am continuing to work on. And hopefully after that, I want to move on towards uh, input systems because I genuinely just want to see that done in some capacity, virtual reality or not, because I'm just getting sick and tired of seeing motion control implementations for virtual reality, since I honestly just believe that it is a complete dead end for the future of virtual reality technology if you start going down the motion control route, since it has significant limitations compared to an intent immersed system wherein by you're trying to directly ascertain what the user wants in some capacity, whether that be via AI prediction or uh, actually directly reading neural inputs or just simply getting data from the brain. So I just think that there are some limitations that motion controls will implement and I want to focus directly on that. I'm just not too sure there's any hardware in the market right now that can actually meet those needs. I mean, the best I've seen so far that somebody could reasonably obtain, I'd say, would be the uh, Emotive Epoch Plus which I believe has a 256 hertz uh, read rate with uh, roughly a thousand hertz or so in the actual raw data, but uh, it's kind of processed down into a more manageable and usable signal down to like 256 hertz. That is nowhere near something that we could probably use within virtual reality because with inputs you're gonna start on, you're gonna want to be at a very fast pace. I mean, with video games, I think the very minimum you could probably hope for would probably be something in the 66 or 100 millisecond range. And 100 milliseconds at 256 hertz does not give you a lot of sample information in order to ascertain a good input. So I'd say that we'd probably want something with no less than a thousand hertz at a scaled down and processed level in order to work with things. Maybe I could just get the raw data from the epoch and see what I could do with that. But I think we need something really quick and that can process this very quickly if we're even going to start hoping to see something that could be manageable within a virtual reality environment for gaming or even any practical applications anytime soon. And at that, there's also the question of whether or not you can actually obtain the intent data. This has been attempted quite a few times and it hasn't been necessarily done to a very good capacity. Although I have some hope that it can be done because uh, electrocortography, I believe, or cortography, I'm not too sure. This kind of gets jumbled up in my head, but uh, I believe that that's been used to uh, give people some capacity of control over robotic arms already. I mean, it was done with a monkey in like the early 2000s or late 90s, and recently, I believe, with humans. So it's not too hard of a jump to believe that that could possibly be done with EEG, since ECOG is essentially just EEG, but inside of the brain instead of being outside on the surface which I'm pretty sure has a few other benefits that I'm not really considering, but I'd say the same fundamental technology could possibly be expanded upon if we can just figure out a way to compensate for the fact that we aren't directly inside of the brain. Now we have to deal with the impedance of your hair, your scalp, your skull, and all that other stuff interfering with the data, as well as all the other interference that we get. I mean, eye blinks, mouth movements, and other such things are constantly just implementing EMG data into your EOG data or, EM or EEG data. Although, honestly, I think those could also be useful in some capacity. But, uh, anyhow, uh, now I'm just starting to ramble on, so... Yeah, for anybody wondering, I'm right now focusing on a touch input system. If everything works out well, I should hopefully be able to show you guys what's going on in June in some kind of actual usable state, which is some, which is definitely more than I can say for anything I've done in the past year or so, which has mostly just been all talk, no action. So yeah, let's hope for the best that I can actually pull this off. Thank you very much for watching this video, and uh, I do sincerely apologize for the lack of videos. I just don't really have all that much time between work, research, studying, and uh, just trying to keep my head on straight. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and being subscribed. This has been Marcus Stahl, logging out.